Hi guys, for our game this afternoon, I'm going for a bit of a cavalry skirmish, so a, a small game. Hopefully this uh, will be a relatively short video, hope you enjoy that. Um, it's a very hypothetical scenario. Uh, again, I do fear a bit like the last one, it might be quite tilted against the French. Sorry, against the Prussians. Uh, but we'll see how we go. Um, we're, I'm postulating this scenario as a uh, 1815 campaign, opening or uh, closing phases uh, of the Battle of Ligny. The French have broken the main Prussian defences along... Uh, the stream uh, through Saint Armand and uh, uh, and through uh, the various different villages um, that uh, line the banks, and uh, Napoleon's unleashed his old guard and his young guard against those French positions and supported that with his heavy cavalry. So here we've got two regiments of heavy cavalry. This one purely of cuirassiers, uh, both standard size regiments, uh, and we'll be treating those as veteran troopers. And uh, over here, again, another two regiments, one of carabiniers and one of cuirassiers. The cuirassier regiment here is a large regiment. Facing off against those, we have a French position, which the cavalry won't be able to crack, uh, I would imagine, which is this little village, uh, which has got one uh, infantry battalion in garrison and one battalion um, in, uh, in the environment, environs of the village. Uh, we've got some Prussian skirmishers lining this hedge up here. The Prussians also have the ability to bring on a light artillery battery in support. And then for Blucher's counterattack, we've got an element of that counterattack here in terms of all of my Prussian light cavalry. So we've got our new um, Landwehr Lancers. Uh, we'll fight that eye as one large regiment of two waves. We've got a regiment of uh, Hussars and a regiment of small regiment of uh, lancers as well. OK, let's see how this game plays. Hope you enjoy it and uh, look forward to your comments and observations at the end. Cheers, everyone. On we go with turn one. OK, our first turn then of movement. The Prussians have moved their uh, hussars up onto the top of this hill to try and pin uh, the French heavy cavalry in position. And they're now moving their lancers up in support. Uh, whereas their final Lancer Regiment is just uh, looking to do a little bit of token opposition to uh, protect that side of the farm. Uh, the garrisons will open fire against the French, and the Prussians have also moved up their horse artillery to have a shot at the um, French as they've moved forward. All right, there won't be any shooting for the French, so we'll be straight on to shooting for the Prussians for this turn. OK, as the Prussian player, I wouldn't usually fire uh, this artillery, but um, given that... Uh, this is going to be a short game and the French are an inviting prospect. And if we're not careful, we're going to get charged. We're going to go for it. So uh, it, it will be at minus four, minus two for uh, moving this turn and minus two for unlimbering. Only horse artillery can fire in that mode. So well, let's have a go. So this will be at minus four. They roll badly. That's a zero. So they will, at effective range, lose one casualty. Not too bad. And it's got to be worth the effort. Then finally, uh, we will also fire. Well, not finally, we will also fire these skirmishers. Three of these bases. The skirmishers are in cover, so they can shoot at cavalry, hiding behind that hedge line. So three shots at the French cavalry. We do cause a casualty from the skirmishers behind the hedge line. And then the garrison will fire at the other uh, Curissa unit, we can see here, uh, firing from the garrison here. Again, three shots, needing fives or sixes. Two shots. All right, so pretty good. Three casualties on the French, and that's firing for turn one. Unfortunately for the Prussians, the uh, French have the initiative, so they will get to declare charges first. And the light cavalry brigade for the Prussians is hesitant, which is not necessarily great. Uh, both brigades for the French are active, and so we'll kick off with charges by the French cavalry. I'll assume they'll have a go against these hussars. Let's see how they get on. OK, let's do the supporting fire from the garrison, so they get three shots. And they cause one more casualty on these attacking cavalry, but not enough to affect the charge result. All right, now onto the charge results. Cursors uh, go against the uh, Hussars, and uh, both sides have supports and will get a reroll. Okay, so the French will get a plus three bonus to this for being heavy cavalry, uh, for um, uh, being one morale grade better, and the, for the Prussians being hesitant. So this is a tough ask for the Prussians. Well, they don't roll badly. They roll a eight, and the French roll a five. 5 plus 3 makes it 8, so it's all square, cavalry versus cavalry. We go straight uh, into a melee. So let's see how that melee plays out in, later in the turn. 
Okay, so we've got the combat going on here. The French have uh, reformed their cavalry units to start weeping, re uh, start wheeling around this uh, flank of the Prussian position. We've pulled the Prussian lancers back a bit so they don't get unformed by any break that is suffered by the hussars. Uh, and we've wheeled the Prussian artillery to allow it to stay on target for this French cavalry if they get the chance next turn. All right, that's it for movement. Um, I think everything fired in the support phase uh, of the turn. So um, that's it for firing. And we'll move on to hand-to-hand -hand combat. Okay, let's roll this off so the French get the advantage of being heavy cavalry and being high morale grade. I've given the uh, Prussian Hussars the advantage of being up slope. Uh, so that gives them an extra combat dice if the slope's deemed to be sleep, steep. And I think the uh, Prussians need all the help they can get in this scenario. So we have deemed it to be such. All right, not a bad roll for the Prussians. They have caused four casualties. And remarkably, the French, despite having a significant superiority, I think I've only caused two. I will just check that again. I think I might have knocked that one over. They may have only caused one. I'll just check that quickly. All right, so I couldn't actually see if I'd knocked the dice when I was finally tossing them up. So we'll assume it was 4-2. So the Prussians still win convincingly. They take the ground and force the cuirassiers back. OK, so uh, we've activated all our brigades. The French got a double six, so that meant they got an extra ADC. They didn't actually have a use for it. So they've uh, put re-rolls on all their brigades, as did the Prussians. Uh, as I say, everything's active. We both rolled a 10 on the initiative, so the French keep it. French get to choose whether to charge on turn three. OK, so not a surprise, the uh, carabiners have... Um, Decided to charge, so uh, they've come down against these uh, Prussian uh, lancers, supported by the uh, 3rd Regiment of Cuirassiers. And again in the centre, these uh, Prussian Hussars uh, have again been charged uh, by the other regiment of French Cuirassiers. And the final regiment has reformed itself uh, on the edge of the slope. Let's do charge results as the French come pounding in. Again, there'll be some defensive fire from the garrison as they go past and up the slope to meet the hussars. OK, so not completely straightforward uh, for the um, for the French. The uh, French get a bonus for being heavy cavalry and for being veterans and having their general attached. So they are on plus three. The Prussians have their general attached, so that makes it a plus two. And uh, and they also uh, caused a casualty on the French as they charged in. So uh, it's only a plus one result for the French. Let's see how they do in the charge resolution. Uh, not very well for the Prussians. So the French roll a 10, the Prussians only roll a 4. And that's a plus one to the French. So they go up to an 11 against a 4. So they have 1 by 7. So they cause the Hussars to rout. They take 1d6 casualties. So they take four casualties, they'll rout and fall back behind those lancers behind them. And, uh, and we'll see how far the French get to charge on if they choose to do so. OK, so the French have chosen to charge on. They rolled a 15, uh, which was not quite enough to bring them into combat range with the lancers. So they've stopped in possession of the hill, uh, potentially a nice a target for uh, musketry fire from uh, that column sitting on the edge of the village and indeed the... Prussian guns. All right, we've got a charge result here um, against the Lancers again. Doesn't look good uh, for the Prussians. Let's see how they do in this one. OK, as the commander for this small uh, regiment uh, is attached to this infantry uh, regiment that's occupying the village, he's not attaching himself to the small cavalry squadron that is his support. Uh, so this will be a straight plus three roll off for the French. Wow, well, and they do well again. So that's 13 against five. So again, six. So that's a victory, so they will rout the Lancers. The Lancers take two casualties, and uh, let's see how far the French pursue. They will choose to pursue, and they roll a 10, 15, 18-inch uh, follow-on move. We'll just do those and see where we go. OK, so uh, the French cavalry have uh, smashed those Lancers and are uh, not quite uh, got into range of uh, the main body of the remaining Prussian troops. It's now time for Russian firing, see if their artillery and their garrisons can disrupt this French attack. OK, we'll fire this gun first. I think it'll be at effective range. We roll an 8, which is not bad, but there's two casualties on the cuirassiers. This column will now open fire. Again, this will be at half effect. A standard volley. An 8 
uh, will be three casualties. That's reduced to one. So one more casualty on the cuirassiers. Taking quite a few now. So they're on six casualties there in the centre. All right, that's it. That's the end of firing for this turn because the garrison fired when the cavalry charged in and the skirmishers down here are out of range. On we go with turn four. OK, so all forces are active. This is a pretty critical roll. Let's see how we do for initiative. The French get a seven. The Prussians, unfortunately, get a six. The French get to go first and they get to do their charges. OK, so not surprisingly, both units of heavy cavalry have charged in and the Lancers have responded by uh, counter-charging counter with their second unit. Let's do the charge reactions, starting with the Cobin. Needless to say, this won't end well. Uh, Landwehr being charged in the flank by uh, veteran heavy cavalry. No, 7-7, seven, seven, uh, but the modifiers still mean that's victory for the uh, Carabiners, and they will uh, smash through and charge into the Hussars. Okay, so this one isn't a foregone conclusion. I think I did it right. So we did the charge of the Lancers into the Carabiniers because they were flanked. Uh, they got to uh, melee with Elan, um, so the Lancers have got Elan, and this unit of uh, uh, cuirassiers are unformed. We then did the attack with the Carabiniers. They got a flank bonus against the Lancers and didn't suffer a flank bonus themselves, uh, but they just uh, achieved on that one a melee um, with no Elan. So we got uh, combats to do. Let's work out the hand-to-hand -hand combat here. Perhaps there's a little bit more life in the game. Okay, the dice, this will be brutal. The heavy cavalry bonuses uh, knock out the Elan that the Lancer's got. And obviously a couple of units are attacking. So this will be heavy damage by the French. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight casualties caused by the French and only two caused by the Prussians. So they win by six. So that is a devastating defeat. Uh, and so, indeed, the Prussian Lancers rout and the French Heavy Cavalry have cleared the table. All right, so uh, that was it. More of a vignette than a game, but uh, I quite enjoyed that. That was quite fun. I've still got to do some more to work out how to play these Lancers. Um, they're very fragile uh, and they're quite a large unit as well. So it's quite difficult to work out how to position them swiftly and whether to fight them as two small units or one large unit. Um, I can sort of do either given the size of the formation. Uh, but going against French heavy cavalry is obviously really tough, but this was a, at least a, a nice little scenario I could uh, think up on the spot uh, that had at least a slight grain of truth. Uh, and I think the results happened, much like they did in the battle. Blucher's charge with his Landwehr cavalry simply bounced off the French, uh, and some French accounts don't even record it happening. So, uh, although clearly it did, because we all know Blucher was unhorsed uh, and nearly captured by the French and only found his way back to... Uh, Prussian lines much later that evening. All right, I uh, hope you have a great day, guys, and uh, look forward to any comments, and um, I'll see you all soon. Cheers.